Hello everyone. Today I am going to be sharing with you the best nutrition strategy and way to hone your diet so that you can maximize your performance in endurance based sports with a focus on long distance running. I'm Jake Abdenor. I am a 252 marathoner. I have a bachelor's of science in kinesiology from Penn State University with a heavy focus on sports nutrition. And I worked for about five years as a NSCA certified personal trainer. Today's video will not feature some crazy secret weight loss formula. I will be giving you practical tools, advice, and research-backed information on how to maximize your running potential, encompassing three main points. Point number one, the best overall diet for endurance runners. Point number two, foods that support that diet. And point number three, practical strategies for how to implement that diet for normal people like you and me. It's Tuesday. Take a seat. Let's have a training talk. I know there is a ton of information out there about diet and nutrition. It can be really confusing, conflicting, and honestly disheartening when you look at all of it. One person says this, another person says this. I don't want that to happen. I want to share the information that I've gleaned over the years from professional resources, and I will share these links with you in the description below. So everything I talk about, I'll link below, and you can fact check me, okay? So when you guys are here, this, these, all of this, or you are here, you feel confident and knowledgeable in your dietary choices. So that way when you line up on race day or you're about to throw down for a really hard workout, you feel that you've done everything you could and everything correctly uh, to best support your running goals so that you can achieve, so that you can maximize your running potential. Okay, some quick legal stuff. I am not a doctor. I am not a registered dietitian. The information I am providing today is just advice and I will share research studies and periodicals that I've found. My advice is not intended to prescribe or treat or cure or diagnose any diseases or anything like that, okay? Please, before you make any radical changes to your diet, please consult a physician and or a registered dietitian. Just as a side note, this episode will not go into eating strategies to increase or decrease your weight. So weight loss, weight gain will not be covered in this week's episode. I'll probably cover it in next week's episode. Today will be purely focused on the overall dieting or eating strategy to maximize performance. Not specifically focusing on weight because that's a big, that's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. <sighs> the, best, the best overall diet for endurance athletes uh, with a focus on runners. When we run, our running muscles use glycogen to propel us forward. We basically always need muscle glycogen to continue to run. You know, in the marathon when people say they hit the wall or they bonked, that is when you run out of muscle glycogen. So it's important that we kind of always have muscle glycogen ready to go. So you're telling me inside of our muscles we have glycogen? and that gives them energy to do stuff? That's exactly what I'm saying. So let's work backwards. So how do we get glycogen in our muscles? We need glucose to be converted to glycogen. Glucose, ever heard of blood sugar? So, so we got muscle glycogen, okay, I need that. Uh, glucose gets converted into muscle glycogen, okay. So what gets converted into glucose? Ah, well, the simplest macronutrient to convert into glucose is carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are super easy for us to convert into glucose. They actually start getting digested in our mouths, which is pretty unique. So research has shown, and this is research that I will put again in the, in the links below. So just click if you wanna know more about it. That for endurance athletes, endurance runners, a diet that's around 60% carbs, 30% fat, 10% protein 
is like around there is generally the best that'll kind of fulfill our needs as runners. Now, everybody has a different body. Everybody will have different specific uh, adaptations and responses and requirements. So that's kind of like an overall guideline. But by far and away, because we, because we burn a ton of muscle glycogen, because that is the energy that is most easily available to our working muscles, it makes sense to have more carbohydrates uh, in our diet if we're doing intense endurance um, sports. Pretty much any race from a 400 on up to uh, the full marathon. Now anything over a marathon is kind of a different story and we won't jump into that in this video. So 60, 30, 10 or maybe like a 70, 20, 10. Very high in carbohydrates, 60 to 70% and then fats and then proteins are actually kind of our least required uh, macronutrient and I'll explain why we definitely need healthy dietary fats to kind of keep our hormones in balance one of the key more hormones is testosterone uh, if we don't have enough fat in our diet actually our testosterone levels will start to decrease so protein is obviously important as well because it helps us rebuild muscles because we break down our muscles and we need to rebuild them but then also if we don't get enough protein in our diet our bodies will actually use the protein that's already in our on our bodies which means muscle tissue, our body will actually start to pull amino acids uh, for energy. And you're kind of always doing this. Usually it's about one or 2% at rest, uh, but during exercise, it can be more. So we just need to make sure that we're getting enough protein during the day. So the RDA for protein is eight grams per kilogram of body weight that you weigh. But for endurance athletes like runners, and again, I'll link this in the description below, usually a little higher at about 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is sufficient to meet our needs. We usually don't really need any more than that. Bodybuilders and powerlifters might need two grams per kilogram of body weight or 2.5. But for endurance athletes, usually 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is totally sufficient. If you eat more protein, it's not really gonna do you any harm, but you could be, you could be getting those extra calories in the form of carbohydrate, which we, as we discussed, uh, will help your running a lot more than protein will. Okay, so we just covered the best uh, overall diet for runners to have. We want to make sure our primary fuel source is carbohydrate, and then we want to, of course, consume dietary fats followed by dietary proteins. 60, 30, 10. Boom. <laughs>let's discuss some healthy foods that'll help us support that diet. But first, I know this can be kind of confusing when you go into a grocery store. What do I buy? What, what do I buy? What food's the healthiest? What food's the what healthiest? Foods the un what food's the un But I thought that white sugar. But I thought that white sugar. What is an agave? What about, what about, what about, what about chocolate? kind of magical tool that completely analyzes the food and tells you exactly what it's composed of. And it was mandated by the government to be put on every single piece of food so that you could look at the food before you buy it so that you know what you're getting into. It's the nutrition label. This is gold. And I'm gonna explain it to you in 30 seconds. Ready, go. First thing I always do whenever I get a new food, I'm like, mm, looks tasty, and I flip it. I wanna see the good stuff. It's gonna be divided into four chunks. The first chunk is at the top. This is your serving size and your calories per. So it'll tell you what one serving is, 55 grams or a cup or eight ounces or whatever, and how many calories per serving. The next chunk right here, we'll discuss the macronutrients. So the macronutrients are fat, carbohydrate, and protein. There's three macronutrients. Saturated fat, trans fat, those are types of fat. Dietary fiber, sugar, those are types of carbohydrate. Cholesterol and sodium, those are not considered macronutrients. The next chunk are the micronutrients. Those are all your vitamins. So vitamin A, calcium, iron, vitamin C, vitamin B12. The next chunk is the ingredient list. The first ingredient on the ingredient list is the ingredient that is most prevalent in that food. This almond milk, the primary ingredient is almond milk, which is basically filtered water with a dash of almonds. These Trader Joe's, Crunchy lentil curls. The primary ingredient is lentil flour. So when you're buying juice, what's the first ingredient label? Is it sugar or is it water? Probably not the best juice. So that was our crash course on nutrition labels. So when you're in the grocery store, when you're in your kitchen, try and pick healthy foods that will support your goals as a runner. I say healthy in quotes because that's a really subjective word. And I really don't like people saying this is healthy, this is unhealthy. Because every food, has different 
meanings and implications to different people. Some people are trying to gain weight for wrestling. Some people are trying to lose weight for dancing. And different foods will be healthy for them. Some people are intolerant to certain foods. Healthy is a really big word, and we're not going to go into that today. So the research is a little shaky on this, and it, there is no all-inclusive answer. When you're picking foods, try to maybe pick foods that might be a little more natural than others. So instead of getting lentil chips, maybe get lentils. Instead of getting almond milk, maybe get almonds. Something that's a little more kind of close to the source. The world isn't gonna be over if you have a cupcake. It's okay, relax. Oh, cupcake's so good. Okay, but maybe, I mean, maybe it makes sense to pick foods that are a little more natural or close to the source than others. Again, the research isn't conclusive on this. So do what you think's best. So for good healthy carbohydrate sources, we have fruits, we have vegetables, white rice, brown rice, pasta, whole wheat pasta, regular pasta. Sweet potatoes are really good for you. So think of it this way, the more, the more close to the source the food is, the more um, complete the food source will be. Complete means that it's gonna have more nutrients in it. So if we take our lentil chips, um, when you actually eat the lentil bean, you're getting extra things with those beans. You're getting some phytonutrients, you're getting some fiber, and you're getting a whole list of other stuff. If I have sweet potato chips versus actually eating sweet potatoes, um, the sweet potatoes are gonna have a lot more extra stuff in it that'll be better for you. So why not eat the thing that's gonna have more healthy stuff in it to make it really simple, okay? For healthy fats, we've got olive oils, canola oil, we've got nuts, peanuts, almonds, cashew. For proteins, we have our we have lean meats, chicken, fish, steak, all that good stuff. But in general, I would just recommend think about the global aspect of your diet. You need to have more carbohydrates more than anything else, right? Think of foods that are gonna be healthier than others to help fulfill that. Think of foods, think of things that you can swap out for real foods. So French fries for real potatoes orange juice for actual oranges, lentil chips for actual lentils, protein powder for actual protein sources like chicken or steak or fish. So that is how to pick the best foods to support your runner's diet. Try to find foods that are a little more natural, less processed, maybe not in a package. Now for our third point, probably the most important aspect of this, practical ways or strategies on how to implement this, this runner's diet into your lifestyle. Because if it's not easy, if you can't do it, then it's worthless, there's no point in doing it. Okay, look, don't stress about this. Go out to dinner with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, have some beers on the weekend, eat some ice cream, enjoy your life, enjoy yourself. But when you do this, try and keep the overall frame of your running goals in mind. So maybe that means picking chicken pesto over a huge rack of prime rib. Maybe that means having two beers instead of five. Maybe that means having one bowl of ice cream instead of three. <laughs> Frame your goal in your mind and put it in like the longer, the long-term picture. It's four months of training, not four days of training. It's four months of good eating, not four days of good or bad eating. So relax, if you have a day where you eat more than you usually do or you eat worse foods than you normally would, it's okay, relax. Just think of the overall, the long-term picture. That's the most important thing. Um, so that's the first strategy. My second strategy, um, if you have a hard time controlling like what you eat, like these chips, if I have things like this in my house, I eat all of it. It's, it's a battle between my mind and my stomach. And the score is like one to five trillion. My stomach, <laughs> always wins. So in my house, I don't have stuff like that. I have ingredients, I have flour, I have sugar, I have rice, I have, or I have like chicken breasts. I have, I have things that I cook if I get hungry. And if there's something specific that I want or specific that I'm craving, then I'll have to go out and buy it or go out to the grocery store and buy it. So usually what that means is if I, dis if I decide last minute I don't wanna go out and buy that food, Maybe it was something that I really didn't need uh, in the first place. That's my second tip, having less extraneous food lying around the house for you to kind of snack and binge on. My third tip would be if you do wanna have snacks lying around the house, try and make them healthier snacks like fruits 
and vegetables. So that way, if you get kind of, you want to snack on something, then you can just kind of pick at apples or oranges or bananas. So that usually kind of helps because fruits and vegetables also have fiber, which can kind of make you feel fuller. And hey, guess what? They're full of great carbohydrates and also some micronutrients and phytochemicals and stuff. And my fourth and last tip is, if you have one of those addictive personalities, kind of like I do, use a food tracker. I'll put mine on screen. This is Lose It. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I've just been using them for a few years. But a food tracker is a great way to basically keep you accountable. It takes 10 seconds to add a food into this app. So there's other food tracking apps out there like MyFitnessPal. They allow you to scan the barcode of a food you buy so you can put it, it puts in all the information like immediately. Again, this is just a, a great way to keep you accountable because it shows you something visually. So and think instead of thinking, oh, I'm eating 100 calories, you can actually see on a pie chart, oh, I've eaten 100 calories, this is how many calories I have left in my day. Or this is how many, this is the percentage of my diet that has been carbohydrates today. It's only been 40%. I should maybe eat a little more carbs. So a food tracker is a great option. Uh, so Lose It is free, My Fitness Pal is free, and there's a few others on the App Store. All right, so to wrap it up, we talked about the best overall diet for endurance running. That's our 60, 30, 10. But, you know, the percentage can change a little bit. Just focus on the fact that carbohydrates should be your primary energy source. Number two, we talked about uh, healthy foods that will help support this diet. Essentially, trying to find naturally occurring food sources and swapping out maybe packaged foods or more processed foods. Have a little more nutrients, they may make you feel better, more complete source of food. Uh, number three, and probably the most important, these are practical ways to implement uh, this runner's diet. The big one is just relax and don't take it too crazy seriously. You need to enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. Just think of the global context. Think of the, the long-term strategy with your running. Remember, it's about you know four to six months of training and eating, not four to six days. So it's okay to have a few bad days here and there. Just be honest with yourself and think about how you're doing long-term. Some ways to kind of help you, help you be accountable are gonna be a food tracker. This will show you visually every day how you're doing on calories and your macronutrients, but you can also visually see your weight loss or weight gain progress. You can see your kind of average macronutrient intake over time. So, you know, over the past four months, have you mostly been eating carbohydrates or fat or whatever? Some other strategies are maybe having, uh, if you have trouble controlling yourself, maybe keeping less extraneous food lying around like cookies, crackers, and stuff like that. And if you do want to have something to munch on, then maybe have some healthy fruits. Last thing I'll say about this is that nutrition for runners is extremely important. So food, so food selection, as well as sleep are two of the probably most neglected things that runners do um, that have a huge effect on your performance. So really give this nutrition thing some thought. So take what I said, look at the links below, look at the research. I encourage you guys to check out Google Scholar. That's a database where you can search Google for scholarly articles, basically like peer reviewed research articles. So you can really check out whether something is like a legit source of information. And I also encourage you, whenever you hear something new involving diet and nutrition, because the industry can be filled with lots of misinformation and different opinions, I encourage you guys to double check everything you hear. So again, I'll provide resources for that in the links below, but nutrition is a science. Commercial, and it has, and it has the line, this statement has not been approved by the FDA. That means that that statement has not been proven true by the Federal Department of Agriculture, which is kind of a big deal. So if something says, this will help you lose weight and look great, but it hasn't been proved at all, chances are that's just a big marketing tool. So really be careful, double check your sources. When you read something online, when you hear something on YouTube, um, double check it and use those links below. Really be sure of what you're kind of eating. And over time, I promise uh, your confidence will build with this. Your confidence in choosing foods. When you go into the grocery store, you'll say, oh, I definitely want this, this, and this. I don't want this, this, and this. When you're out at restaurants, you'll feel more comfortable ordering different types of food because you'll know, you'll be, you'll have educated yourself. You'll know what you're putting into your body, which is a hugely important thing to do, right? So hopefully it kind of helped start you guys off on this self-educational journey. 
and I encourage you to continue to educate yourselves. All right, guys, so that is my Training Talk Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys like this video, please link down below, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, I would appreciate it tremendously. And leave me your comments, tell me what you guys think. Um, if you want to give me more suggestions for other things to talk about in future episodes, that'd be great. I think next week we'll talk about how to take this whole diet approach or this runner's diet approach and put it into weight loss and weight gain. We'll kind of talk about body composition, which I think will be interesting. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'll talk to you later.